Instead of being frightened by new nuclear threats from Russia, the West has begun to openly laugh at Putin. German Defense Minister Pistorius responded with a bold and ironic tone during his visit to Vilniusan, the changes to the nuclear doctrine announced by Russia, which Putin read from a piece of paper in front of his Security Council. Pistorius responded dismissively to a question about Putin's nuclear threats, saying his words were not even worth commenting on. Well-known Russian economic analyst and blogger Anatoly Nesmian emphasizes that leading politicians in the West are already beginning to openly laugh at Putin and his threats. According to him, laughing at an opponent is the most painful thing for Putin, since his words are no longer taken seriously by his opponents. They are already starting to laugh openly at Putin and his threats. What's the worst thing? When they laugh at their opponent, they are not taken seriously. This is a consequence of the endless number of various red lines and notches that Russian rulers have been busily drawing. Quantity has turned into quality. They are no longer perceived as serious people, as mentally unstable. Yes, concerns, of course, remain, but as subjects of the political process, no longer. He emphasized, according to the expert, Putin has undermined his image and ridicule of him is a serious blow to Russia. Earlier, Putin decided to make changes to the Russian nuclear doctrine due to the war in Ukraine. Putin has, for the first time, voiced proposals to change the Russian nuclear doctrine, which look like an attempt to justify the possible use of nuclear weapons in the war with Ukraine. They were presented at a meeting of the Russian Security Council. Thus, the updated draft expands the category of countries and military alliances in relation to which the Kremlin intends to implement nuclear deterrence. An attack on Russia will be considered aggression by any non-nuclear power with the support of a nuclear state. Nuclear weapons may be used in response to information about a massive launch of air and space attack weapons against the Russian Federation, including drones and cruise missiles. A condition for the nuclear response will also be a critical threat to Russia's sovereignty. What is meant by critical threat is not explained. In addition, the Russian Federation may use nuclear weapons in the event of aggression against Belarus. A private Robinson R-44 helicopter has crashed in Russia's Arkhangelsk Oblast, resulting in the deaths of two men, one of whom is believed to be Sergei Smedinin, a member of Arkhangelsk City Council from the United Russia Political Party. Latvia-based Russian media outlet Meduza and Russia Telegram channels reported this. Reports emerged on September 26 that a helicopter traveling from the village of Bich to the village of Karandashevskia had gone missing and contact with it had been lost. On the morning of September 27, Kremlin-aligned Russian news outlet TASS reported that the wreckage of the helicopter had been found, and the bodies of two people had been discovered at the crash site. A criminal case has been opened regarding the incident, with reports stating that the flight had not been authorized. Telegram channels close to law enforcement wrote on September 26 that Sergei Smetanin, a member of Arkhangelsk City Duma from the United Russia Political Party, and local businessman Alexei Semenov, the owner of the helicopter, were on board. Smetanin and Semenov, as reported, were flying to go on a fishing trip, Meduza summarized. After sanctions were imposed on Russia due to its bloody war against Ukraine, there has been an increase in aircraft accidents in Russia. This surge is attributed to a shortage of essential parts that Russia previously used to import from Western countries. Changes in Russia's nuclear doctrine are intended to discourage Ukraine's Western allies from supporting attacks on Russia, the Kremlin said Thursday. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that the revisions in the document announced by President Vladimir Putin are a signal warning those countries about the consequences in case of their involvement in an attack on our countries with various assets, not necessarily nuclear ones. In a strong, new message to the West, Putin said Wednesday that any nation's conventional attack on Russia that is supported by a nuclear power will be considered a joint attack on his country. The threat? outlined in a revision of Moscow's nuclear doctrine, was clearly aimed at discouraging the West from allowing Ukraine to strike Russia with longer-range weapons and appears to significantly lower the threshold for the possible use of Russia's nuclear arsenal.
Speaking during a meeting that discussed changes in the nuclear doctrine, Putin didn't specify whether the modified document envisages a nuclear response to such an attack, but he emphasized that Russia could use nuclear weapons in response to a conventional assault posing a critical threat to our sovereignty, a vague formulation that leaves broad room for interpretation. Russia is making slow but steady gains in Ukraine as the conflict grinds through its third year, and the Kremlin is seeking to discourage stronger Western support for Kiev. Putin emphasized that the revised doctrine spells out conditions for using nuclear weapons in greater detail, noting they could be used in case of a massive air attack. Uh, участие в нападении на нашу страну различными средствами, причем не обязательно ядерными. И ранее здравомыслящие главы государств, здравомыслящие политики, аналитики прекрасно понимают и понимали серьезность заявлений президента Путина. Тем более, когда речь идет о таком такой беспрецедентной конфронтации, спровоцированной прямым вовлечением западных стран, в том числе и ядерным держав, в конфликт вокруг Украины. Разумеется, происходит корректировка ядерного сдерживания с учетом тех элементов напряженности, которые складываются по периметру наших границ. Когда будет опубликовано, сейчас я вам не могу. Сказать.